Um, one, the agenda we have right now is a departure from what we've done on previous fiber leases as we're leasing, proposed to lease directly to the company that will be utilizing the bandwidth, which would be MSI. The city has worked with them to develop uh, grants to help fund the construction of the fiber optic lease or fiber optic connection and they would like to lease directly from the city in order to have additional flexibility of how that fiber is used in terms of potentially connecting to multiple internet service providers or positioning themselves for off-site backup in city hall or potentially other facilities. Um, this to me is an interesting question because our fiber use resolution currently says we shall only lease fiber to other government agencies, mm -hmm. internet service providers, or others with council approval. This gives us the opportunity to look at how we're going to utilize the resources that we have available. Um, in my opinion, this is not a constrained capacity. We have significant capacity to allow this type of lease. And it just comes down to a policy direction of if the city wishes to pursue a lease directly with a local business that then will also have to connect back to an internet service provider. The city is not going to be providing internet service to anybody. They will still have to have a contract with the provider of their choice in order to leave City Hall. The fiber is just a direct run from the new MSI location to City Hall and then they'll be able to cross-connect to whichever or multiple providers if they so choose. Okay. So that would be the summary, and I'd open it up for <coughs> questions or discussion at this point. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate that. Uh, could you address, uh, I, I understand that the agreement has some reference to exclusivity, uh, exclusive use of that single fiber of a 12 bundle, 12-strand uh, bundle, and how that relates to this multiplexing capacity that the city retains by by its um, policy and then also the uh, idea about fragmenting the system relative to desiring two strand miles uh, relative to this request which is significantly less than that correct um, as to start with I think it might be worth um, <coughs> looking at the fiber use resolution to see if we should update it mm -hmm. The two strand miles is an area that's a fairly significant distance in the city of Moscow. And fragmentation, I think, was put in to protect against, you know, too short of runs or running out of capacity and help protect the overall system. In general, the way this lease would work is EMSI would have exclusive use to one of the fibers in the bundle that was pulled to their site. So out of the 12 fibers, they have access to an exclusive use to one fiber that then is tied back to a 48 count fiber that then comes back to City Hall. So we would have additional capacity on either way. If for some reason we had the need for additional capacity on that run, either to EMSI or on any of our other runs, we do reserve the right to multiplex the fiber, which lets us use one fiber and run multiple connections, use it on different wavelengths of light. This can be done fairly easily and it's a very common practice. But as of now, I don't see us needing that capacity for this run within the next three years or potentially quite longer than that. So is that concept um, in conflict with the language about exclusivity or not? No, I don't believe it is okay. because we reserve the right to use other tools to expand the capacity such as the multiplexing. And they only reserve, have a right to one fiber out of the 12 because that's what they are leasing. Okay. And in your, from your perspective, is there any risk that the city would be perceived as competing with the private sector in, in this area? I mean, no one else has the fiber to offer at this point, right? So we're, I would presume that it's not a conflict, is that? I don't believe it's a conflict because we are only providing the path. <coughs> the service providers are the ones that will actually provide any service over that fiber. Mm -hmm. If I may. Thank you. Yes, Gary. Yes, the fact that we lease to uh, internet service providers is merely a choice. Mm -hmm. um, so any exclusivity, if you will, uh, ISP, we don't have them sign something that says they will provide it to the public. They bring forward, ask for the lease, and typically, because that's a business they're in, uh, we've allowed that. So 
it's no departure as far as the city's ability if we're providing it to an ISP we can certainly provide it to anyone else who wants to lease it as Jesse indicated the the resolution should probably be amended we should modernize it but I don't see it from a competition standpoint any different than uh, leasing it to an ISP <coughs> Sue well this is Greek to me so I was just going to ask you if it would be out of order. To, I see Tony and Monica Ray here who do speak this language. If is it okay to ask them if they have any comments regarding this? Sure, and representing a particular service provider. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. because this doesn't. Like I said, it's Greek to me. I mean, I so. Sure. I guess you would have to ask them if I, they're willing. To. I would be glad to do so <laughs> if they're willing to uh, to speak. Do you, May, may I ask any? a question of Jesse? Oh, yes, before? yes, please do. Of course, Jesse, you're, I forget what terminology you and the mayor were using, but in the contract it talks about strand feet. Correct. What What's the different terminology for this fiber optic cable? It It's without Our, without confusing Sue too much. <laughs> Or myself, <laughs> or me, or, yeah, or anybody you. else up here. Yeah, I'll admit it. <laughs> the, you you pull you pull a cable. Correct. It's a fiber optic cable. What makes it up? What's inside it? If you cut it in half and look at the end of it. If where we can talk about uh, fiber counts, that's what you have in it. They have the supporting infrastructure, but the real part of it is how many fibers are inside of that cable and each fiber is considered a strand. So the way that we do our fee at this point is by how many feet of strand they are leasing and they have access to. So, for example, from City Hall to the junction box, we have a 48-strand cable going. We put in a splice case to connect it to a 12-strand cable. So their strand feet is in basically the linear distance of each individual fiber strand back to City Hall. So think of it as a rope with 12 individual, you know, buffers inside of it. But or they're, 12 only, fibers. they're only leasing the use of one of those Correct. fibers, not the entire rope. Correct. And they are not, <clears throat> and, and they will be precluding the use, if I may, Please. of that particular fiber to anybody else, but nothing else it's in the rope mm. correct not really well not if you want to unless, multiplex yeah. it you still can we still have the right to put in a multiplex device at each end to provide additional capacity if we needed to along the fiber that they along are that's what single strand correct okay don't go any further because i think i'm with you so far <laughs> okay okay you okay sir? yeah <laughs> I, I just want to also acknowledge that I really appreciate this discussion because I'm also trying to play catch up on how all of this works. <clears throat> I think I understand that it's um, a glass fiber. Is that correct? And yes. And light going through there that's carrying the data. Correct. Okay. That part I'm starting to get. Okay. Yeah, so my familiarity with uh, fiber optics came as a, an, a nurse working with endoscopy, and I won't go any further than that either. either so. <laughs> okay. I, if I yes, may, one, please. One more. Sure, of course. Uh, Jesse, item 12 in the agreement says use of leased fiber. Leasee shall use the leased fiber, fiber exclusively for whatever purposes are legal and shall at all times comply with laws, regs, et cetera. That's still not the rope. That's that one fiber. The single fiber, correct. That we can multiplex. Correct. Thank you. Wayne? I'm going to have a, a couple of questions about the current ordinance. So when will it be appropriate to ask that? Now or later? I would the, love to hear the, the, the policy, you mean, the Exhibit A that we have about here? The, about the, the current uh, one that we're going by, the resolution 2625. A couple of questions sure. on that. One is, one is an interpretation. Okay. It reads that dark fiber shall only be leased to electronic data providers who are engaged in the business of providing data transmission services to the public or other governmental entities and or public subdivisions of the state of Idaho. There's, there's two ways to take that. It's that they're in the business of providing data transmission service to the public or to governmental agencies. <laughs> Or the other way to take it is 
leased to electronic data providers who are engaged in the business of providing data transmission services to the public or other governmental entities and political subdivisions, meaning that they themselves could use, could lease the strand. Follow now, yeah, which see. interpretation is correct? Let's what? eat, Grandma, or let's eat, Grandma. <laughs> no, there's a, co there's a comma lies. in there. Uh, there's a comma in there, there that does There is a comma, it but it's, it's still yeah, not as clear, and so I would like an interpretation on it. I think I know what it's supposed to mean, but <laughs> it's not real clear. India was lost to the British for a comma. We could, we could ask uh, our city attorney, Rod Hall, for, for clarification. Do you find any confusion in the phrasing there? That would be the, uh, uh, looks like item number one. Is that what you're looking at uh, on the uh, Exhibit A titled Dark Fiber Lease Standards and Policies? Thank you, Madam Mayor, counselors. Um, when you put the comma in there, um, but it also has the, the or after it. So I think that it's um, the business that's providing data transmission services to the public or you're, it's another government entity or a political subdivision. So I think that okay. those are your two choices. <clears throat> well, that's how I was interpreting it, but I mm -hmm. just wanted a clarification. Now, if, if I may, on Please. my second question, and I don't know that there's anybody here other than if you can remember it or if Gary can remember when this resolution was put together, what was the reason behind saying that the fiber shall only be leased to electronic, da electronic data providers? Why? That, well, that was 2006, and as I, Gary, go ahead, please. Yeah, the genesis of this project was Avista was donating uh, dark fiber cable, just bulk cable, they were in the business of uh, providing that in Spokane mainly. Uh, they got out of that business, sold their cable in Spokane, and had a bunch of extras, so they uh, allowed us to have it. We were engaged in discussions with uh, the state of Idaho, ITD, that was putting in a smart uh, traffic signal system. I um, can't remember what they called it, Les, but it was to um, – tie all the traffic signals together so you could have a smart signal system so for efficiency. And at that point, we were allowed to, um, Moscow School District was also looking for uh, better access, as was Gritman Medical Center. And at that time, we had already installed a small fiber uh, between some medical offices for Gritman when the quick care used to be in the Renaissance Mall and they wanted connection back to Gritman. Didn't we have uh, University of Idaho also involved with that? No, 